What's up everyone, Tom here with another video. Well, that was interesting, another big move on the stock markets yesterday. In this video, we'll be covering our technical analysis thoughts on the S&P 500, NASDAQ, volatility index rising, dollar index, and of course, Apple and Tesla. There's a whole bunch of things going on in the market right now and so much uncertainty ahead of the US election. We'll be discussing fear coming back into the markets, what it means and the critical level that just got reached. This video is going to be exciting. Stay tuned. Well guys, what are we seeing? A sea of red on the markets yesterday with big closes coming down for the FANG stocks. Notably Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook and Amazon were all down almost 2% each in some more. And overall, nothing really was safe in the markets. If we look at the broader markets overall, you'll notice that of course the NASDAQ led the day in terms of declines, followed by the S&P and the Dow Jones. This is because the tech sector was uncharacteristically weak yesterday and more importantly, when we were doing our live stream, we had futures opening up pretty aggressively. In fact, they were even higher at one point coming into the US Open. Then we saw that normal trap that we've been seeing almost all the time. The first hour of trade or the retail trading period has been a very big trap in the markets over the last month. Then we saw a gradual decline followed by bigger selling into the end of the day. And as we know, the selling close is the most important part because that's where the big traders are positioning in. They're positioning in and out and all of that good stuff. If we take a look at the sectors overall, no sector was really doing very well. Notably, of course, the energy sector was down quite a lot. In fact, it was the worst performing sector of the day. And things like, of course, the technology sector also weren't doing that well. I don't think anything really stands out too much here other than because of concerns over the current crisis right now, energy seems to be getting smashed again and that's also due to stimulus concerns as well and when we're talking about stimulus we're obviously talking about will we get a stimulus plan in yesterday's live opening bell and if you haven't subscribed definitely consider doing so and joining us at our live monday bell sessions for the stock market we did a bit of a vote as a community and most people agreed that we would not see a stimulus coming into the election and that we would most likely see it after the election. The question is how long? Will this stimulus come in before Christmas? Will it be postponed until after Christmas? A definitely interesting idea. And if you can come up with a way of looking at that and then making decisions, you can obviously look at consumer discretionary and a few other things to try to figure out a way of getting an edge on maybe some sectors in the market. Remember, no stimulus, potentially worse sales figures, for consumer discretionary. Maybe even Amazon goes down a little bit and gives us a value opportunity. So when we're talking about election, which is part of the news right now, obviously Trump and Biden, I think it's just notable, will not have their microphones turned on during these debates. We do have a debate looks like set for this week and that will always be a notable thing. I also just wanted to really bring up this idea of please do not read into articles too much that are posted by the mass media. Now, this is obviously Market Watch. We do use them a little bit. But you'll notice here it says smart money just reversed bets against tech stocks in a huge way. So they're basically saying that smart money started buying tech last week. Now, the problem with these articles is every time they're hitting the media, people are looking at it. They're getting swayed by it. But it's a trap for retail traders. They released things like this, which was, of course, speculators flipped to net positive on the NASDAQ futures in near record purchases. The question is, though, notice the key point here, NASDAQ futures, not NASDAQ, the real market, not generally anything else. It's speculation. And when speculation is there, we know Wall Street comes in and they slaughter us. That's the whole idea. They take our money. They make money. Markets must be moving and volatile, but never fall into that trap as much as possible. And it's something I really am very passionate about in this channel, helping everyone out there as a community to get better at understanding that kind of idea. Now, in terms of earnings, we had IBM kind of missing a little bit. It was pretty flat. But we've got Netflix, Procter & Gamble, Snap coming out. And then, of course, Tesla, the big one on Wednesday. Price action looks a bit dire on Tesla at the moment, so we'll need to look at that today to get an idea of what's going on. So stick with us as we're going to go through now some of the key indicators that show us market strength or weakness for the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. 
As a community, we've been growing this list over time. And of course, if there's any top things that you look at, send them in, comment down below with some of the things that you look at for market sentiment. And we'll definitely look to add that to our overall thesis on the markets. Put call ratios came in yesterday from the CBOE at a 1.5 rating for the SPX. And we've been following these a little bit. If you look at this on a daily view chart, you'll notice that puts were declining a little bit and coming back down. Now, wherever puts are really, really low, whereas they're down here, usually that gives us a bit of an early warning sign that we are going to see a decline in the market. We don't usually want put call ratio very, very high. And the reason why is it's a bit contrarian, but it's because again, that Wall Street stealing from the poor and of course to the rich concept. It's that retail herd mentality manipulation. Let's get into the market now. And I think the most important thing looking at right now is the VIX the volatility indicator. It is probably getting to the most interesting point it's been at for a few weeks. And this is VIX on TradingView on the one hour. We'll notice it's starting to approach that 30 level. Now, if we go to a four hour, long time viewers of the channel will know exactly what I'm about to say. They will know 25 and of course, between 25 and 30, we have body close channel basically holding within the zone. Now, anyone that's been trading for a while and knows a little bit about technical analysis will know that channels generally go the distance. And the thing with the fear index or the VIX is that if it does pop its head above here and close on the four hour or daily, we're most likely going to see a spike of the VIX into 35. What does that mean for the stock markets? Well, if the VIX gets through this zone, stocks are going to fall. Generally, if the VIX goes up and fear rises, we're going to see stock market decline as well. And that could be pushing us through several very key support zones that we just reached yesterday when we have a look at it. So VIX is well worth checking out. We've also mentioned a few times that generally US dollar strength has been a big deciding factor of the markets declining. Now, yesterday we had some weird Asian European trade where the dollar actually fell lower. It's trading still within the range, but again, failed to get above that 93 86 resistance. It's hovering around this 9340. We expect some buying pressure here, but look at the four hour. All of the moving averages, the 20 exponential, the 50 exponential, and the 200 simple are all sitting there as dynamic resistance. So the dollar may have some struggles in the next couple of days, or at least the next couple of hours, if it is to go bullish and keep moving up. On to Dr. Copper. Well, Dr. Copper is recovering right now, but it hit that resistance again at the 3.1 and then sold off. If we take a look at daily on the Dr. Copper, we'll notice here that 3.1 was the resistance previously, and again, act as resistance. It's looking relatively bullish right now, and it probably tells me that any of these dips in the market right now are most likely corrective and will be reversed. We still probably hold the 12 to 18 month bullish case on the market, but overall, that doesn't mean that we don't get opportunity into the election and after the election. So it's good to be a trader and investor right now in the markets for sure. Dr. Copper showing us relative strength, but a little bit of weakness in trade yesterday. So let's begin by talking about this S&P 500. What did we see? Well, we're gonna use the SPX to start off with and then we'll move to the futures. So the SPX sold off into role reversal. We've talked about this level before. 34.20 to 34.30 has been a good support resistance zone. It was previously resistance over here, resistance here, and now it's acting as buying level support. I'm sure many subscribers of the channel will be looking at this level yesterday and would have been going, yes, it hit my zone. And the reason why is we hit the 20 exponential moving average here on the daily, and that's at the same point that of course we're hitting that 34.20 zone. That's really a double up of some nice support resistance. And if we draw a fib also over the entire move in terms of the move from the bottom to the top up here, the market has just corrected to the 38.2 fib. And as everybody will know, we love the 38.2 fib to the 50 fib zone. This is always the area where if you believe in the bullish case scenario, you generally see pickups in the market. And it's good to see that the whole move here has pulled back to a proper corrective phase area. Not bad moves yesterday on the SPX. So let's now move over to the US 500 or of course the futures contract. Again, the 20 was pretty similar. The 20 was almost at around the same area. So the futures contract was trading pretty similarly to the SPX overall. 
but you'll notice it is picking up in the Asian session. There has been some buying and we wouldn't be surprised for it to hold around this level, this 34.50 and find some resistance. That was previous body support over here on the left-hand side. And there is going to be some selling pressure that comes back into the market here. But it's no surprise overall that we did see buying pressure off that previous resistance, which became support zone. 34.30, really a key area. And if the VIX, of course, does get up and it moves above that 30 zone and closes, what will this mean for the market? Well, the market will most likely break and close underneath the 34.28, 34.30 zone. This area here will then become a point of resistance again as a break close would signal shorting. And all of a sudden, we're in a market that's looking quite short back down to even potentially those 3,210 lows. This is such a significant level. It was significant last time with great buying pressure coming through and it'll be significant this time if the bulls aren't able to hold it. So it's worthwhile putting this alert in and then watching the price action. Would also be signaling a new break close low. And of course, that would also mean a peak trough, lower peak, and of course, lower trough confirmation on everything. And we really already have that, but we've gone into such a key level of support. I don't think it's enough. This would be the follow on effect if it was to be able to get through. So it's at buying pressure right now, but it needs to hold these levels. I think the NASDAQ probably is the best chart to be looking at. And I want to bring these up because look at this, the 2050 exponential moving average crossed down here and then never crossed back down to, of course, the short side at any point through this rally over the last couple of weeks. What are we about to see? 2050 cross. That's very, very important when it comes to NASDAQ right now. And the NASDAQ also hit that beautiful 200 level we discussed in the live stream and we've discussed on the channel. The NASDAQ is moving in 200 point increments. Notice it stops just before the 11.6. One of the things we talked about in the live stream was that we want to be targeting a level, but then targeting slightly higher than the round number, maybe five or six points, maybe 10 points above. And that will usually give us a trigger point. If we target exactly the round number, the problem is sometimes you'll miss the trades by being too much of a surgeon and too exact in the markets. So NASDAQ really looks great in terms of the support level here. It came back down to the 11.6, but we do have that 2050 about to cross. Will it get down? In terms of bullish pressure now, if we do see bullish buying here and the bullish market moves up, where are we going to go? Well, back into this 11.773 or 11.8 zone, and that's now going to act as resistance as it was previously support. Let's move over to the NASDAQ futures now and talk about it. So the NASDAQ futures, here we are seeing that kind of thing play out. We hit the 11.6 area. We've now moved up in the Asian session into European session. And if we do reach back to this 11.800 zone, what are we going to face on the one hour? We're gonna face a 20 moving average, a 200 simple moving average, and a 50 exponential moving average above. All of these things, we've got dynamic support times three, and we've got physical price action support at this zone as well. And now the market's already moving down before it even reached there, but this is always a very, very nice little zone for intraday traders. If you see this on a stock, you see this on a share, anything like that in the world, usually this is a great zone to be targeting and looking at opportunities on the smaller time frames. It's one of those trading zones, dynamic supports plus price action, plus role reversal just in general. Always a great zone. So for the NASDAQ really right now, we're still targeting 200 point increments. That means that every 200 points, if we break down and close below, we're gonna probably go to the next 200 points and the next 200 points and so on. You'll notice 11.2 in particular, if we bring this line down here, was an incredibly strong support line previously. So if we do get through 11.6, move down to 11.4, and then when we get through 11.4, expect pretty heavy buying at that 11.2 zone. 200 point increments seems to be the magic numbers right now on the NASDAQ. Let's talk about Tesla into earnings. So we have Tesla earnings coming up guys. Pretty exciting because I'm always interested to see how this stock reacts. It reacts super hard both ways to earnings and that's because it's at a super valuation. If the hype is real, we know that when it breaks through things like 455 again, it's most likely going to trigger buying pressure into 500. 
If it doesn't support the figures though, we're at the 20 exponential moving average here on the daily. And what do we know about that? Well, it held it previously. And if it does break through, it has a tendency recently to go back to the 50. So again, where's the 50? Perfect psychological number at 400. It's already done it twice. So if it breaks through the 20, traditionally it's gone to the 50. A very clean, simple analysis on Tesla today. On to Apple. Apple is a conundrum. It's now done its release. I thought the release was really lackluster. I'm also surprised either they've got a lot of stock, but when I was ordering my iPhone, I noticed that they weren't sold out for as long as they usually are. Now, either they've got lots or people aren't as interested. That's more of my speculation. But overall, from the price action perspective, Apple bulls need this to turn around right now. Otherwise, it's going to go down to 110 and then possibly even go back down to maybe even the promised land of 100. If we start to get through all these moving averages, that's going to be pretty bearish for Apple. And it trades like a retail trade sentiment right now. People like you and me are all out there trading this Apple stock. And that means that it's targeting round numbers. It's targeting those round numbers. Notice how it stops at resistance at around the 125. Selling pressure comes in. Target round numbers mostly on Apple for buys and sells. And I think you'll do better as it is trading that way. And that's the way that we need to understand these instruments. Remember, most traders only trade three to four instruments. They become really good at those instruments. They understand how they trade and then they trade them. That's probably one of the big tips that a lot of people forget out there. So we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to subscribe and of course hit that alert and like button. We're really appreciating the support of you, the trading community right now. Monday sessions going amazingly. Obviously we'll cover any other special events that are worthwhile. And I must say that I've really enjoyed the live sessions that we've done together. Thanks very much. Happy profits. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now, everyone.